Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 72 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa. 1, 2, reload. After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground, near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural. Because, of course... It's only natural. <laughs> We saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. Oh, then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Byakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. We need to determine what ultimately killed the victim. I need to concentrate. Alright, here we go. Let's try and figure this out now. I'm just trying to work out how do we <laughs> how do we even work this out now that I think about it. So body before the explosion, Monokuma file number five and exploded body analysis. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. Yes. She was already dead. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. Okay. And it wasn't you because of the knife, right? Wasn't the knife. And then there's only one other thing. Oh yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Okay, let me see something actually. I can only think of one thing that could have killed her. I want to check something. What did the Monokuma files specifically say? They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. Okay, so that last bit, the body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. I believe that is supposed to tell you that the wounds uh, were not the like the the death blow so to speak um it says that they had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe it doesn't specifically say that they were killed by that but because that last bit tells you that um the wounds weren't the cause of death then it actually ends up being the strike on the back of the head i think that's how they want you to work it out so it's a bit tricky so victim's fatal injury it's not the explosion it's not the knife it's not the wounds that come up later it's this. So we've got to grab that with our um, our gun, so to speak. And now we um, counter uh, Byakuya's statement, or refute Byakuya's statement, to use the legal term. Mufuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it? The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Okay, so because they weren't fresh wounds, then they couldn't have been what killed her. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. That's actually quite a hard one. Like, you have to really... Like, if you're doing this for the first time, it's kind of difficult, in my opinion, to notice something like that. It's, it takes quite a lot of, um, of thought. If you play this for yourself, like, um, that's where the real fun is. So, like, even though I want people to watch, I totally don't mind, well, either way, but I totally don't mind if you, like, start watching this series and you're like, wow, this is great, I'm going to play it for myself. You play it for yourself and then you come back and watch me do it to see, like, well, I guess it, I'm not playing it blind, so <laughs> there is that. But anyway, just mentioning that. Then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe. Really? How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely. 
Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. Nope, wouldn't work either. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. The only way I could see that the pickaxe would work as the as the weapon is if they held it normally, but instead of swinging it as it's meant to be swung in a vertical motion, swinging it horizontally and hitting it with sort of the slightly thicker part at the top and sort of from uh, in a horizontal way, so from right to left. That's the only way I can see it working as a like a weapon to knock someone out. But apart from that, um, yeah, what Toko said is right. Couldn't get any power if you swung it the other way. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. <laughs> No thanks. I bet you just hit me with a metal end and call it an accident. <laughs> I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground and, and spit on it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I feel the same way. Looks like we're on the same page this time. He's so weird. <laughs> Seriously? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master. So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? This one's so cruel. The real murder weapon, yeah. It's cruel because it's hard to figure out, but the answer is the titanium arrows. I got it. And you'll see why, Mukuro if you haven't figured it out. in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed her. And that something was... the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. Arrow? That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds... kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. I don't blame Hina for doubting it, because there's one more thing about that weapon. One more secret. All right, can you figure it out? Well, if you don't, it's coming up. Here we go. The titanium arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thin. Talking back to Master! You have no right! There's no doubt that the arrow is a murder weapon, but there's more to it than that. Alright, the bloody duct tape. I have no doubt that you sure? You don't sound to well, Hina's right, but there was... Like now this is... Just in time. <laughs> that one's actually kind of tough to get, they don't give you much time to, to hit that, so I just decided to go for it in that way. You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Another weapon? Apparently duct tape is a weapon now. <laughs> the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. <laughs> One stick is weak, but put them together and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. That's cool. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker... Uh-oh. It was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh, no. Well, you, you have. absolutely have. How can you say that with that such proof? Lie. Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Uh, oh, um... Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. 
I have evidence. Evidence that Kyoko went to the dojo. Yep. The evidence is the woodblock key. Wood woodblock key. It was found in her room. But there's a little problem with that too. Kyoko was in the dojo is right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. It was in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. What? She was protecting me? Then does that mean she... She knew I was being attacked. And she came to my rescue. Could that be when... Which would mean that Kyoko... She killed someone for me? That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. What? Byakuya should know better than anyone? What does that mean? Alright, so there's one more problem with everything that's been said. Let's see if we can work it out. Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Byakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But could I really have done that? Hmm. Byakuya should know that Kyoko didn't do it. But why him? Well, if you remember, exactly. I'm not the killer. Byakuya took Kyoko's key off her, her room key. So if, so if um, he took the key, how did she get into her room? So let's see if we can prove it. Would never hide and so the locker key in my own room. There's proof. No, it's wrong. All right, now get ready. If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Byakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room. Then obviously, I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. Hmm. No, that's not actually true. There was a clear contradiction in what Kyoko just told us. An obvious lie. But this... This just isn't like her. To try and save herself with such a desperate lie? Does she really feel that threatened? Because she's the killer? Or is it something else? Is there some deeper meaning hidden in what Kyoko said earlier? 
If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. The Mastermind's trap. The Mastermind is trying to trap Kyoko? But what if that's not really true? What can I do? What should I do? What should I... The Mastermind's trap. The victim was Mukuro, and Kyoko killed her? What does Kyoko really know? What am I supposed to do? Kyoko's lie. I'm, I'm the only one who knows it's a lie. I'm the only one who can expose it. But who can I trust? What am I supposed to do? The Mastermind's trap. If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. We know the danger, but if that risk means solving the mystery, we have no choice. Am I wrong? What do I do? I have to decide right here and now whether or not to expose Kyoko's lie. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pursue the lie. There was a lie hidden within Kyoko's statement just now. A lie? Isn't that right, Kyoko? You said it. The burden of proof is on you. So let's hear it. Where's this lie, then? Kyoko is definitely lying, and it must be because there's some other deeper truth she wants to keep hidden. Alright. So, if you remember, Kyoko told us something right before we came to this class trial. Kyoko's Why account. Have the key to my room? She said... Kyoko used Monokuma's secret tool, which grants access to any room in the school, to sneak into the second floor of the dorms. This area seems to have no monitors or security cameras, so Monokuma's secret tool granted her access to anywhere, because including to be her room. There's no doubt about that, right? You are correct. So I couldn't possibly have gotten into my room. Then, when we search Kyoko's room... How else could the key have gotten there? Someone other than me must have put it there. That's the only explanation. Kyoko says it wasn't her who left the key to the dojo locker in her room, but is that really true? I didn't have All right. I'd given it to Byakuya. Sorry, Kyoko. No doubt of you are correct. So but I, I have to follow the truth. That's wrong. No, that's wrong. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. I've made my no. decision. Kyoko could have gotten into a room. You said so yourself, didn't you, Kyoko? Actually, to be precise, not quite. I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? Monokuma's secret tool? Kyoko stole it from the headmaster's room. It lets you get into any room in the school. Which means, she could have used it to get into her own room. Then I guess that's it. You're giving up just like that? You admit to killing- No, I'm simply recognizing that I lost. What are you talking about? Like I said, this was a trap. And I wasn't able to escape it. So I lost. That's all this means. Huh? Then, are you saying- you really didn't... Kyoko, you really... aren't the killer? Okay! Time's up! Huh? I'm sorry to say, but your time is up! All done! All finished! The class trial is all over! Uh, but that's ridiculous! Since when is there any... It's because you were late! So the trial started late and time ran out! So then, it's time for voting time, okay? <laughs> it's Everyone, time for voting time. Please vote using the lever in front of you. But I guess we already know who the blackened is, don't we?
<laughs> Good job! You got it right! <laughs> Brilliantly right! We got it right? Does that mean Kyoko really is the killer? But something strange is going on here. There's something wrong with this whole class trial. Kyoko! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! Is everyone ready? Okay then! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! And I'm sorry I have to punish you, but we have to wait until next episode. So, I want to thank you all for watching episode 72 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 1-2 Reload. If you want to find out what happens next, come back next time for it. But my name is Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and I'll see you next time.